Walter, you are known for your audacity, your creativity, of course, but uh, being provocative sometimes. And I was wondering, why did you choose that path, this way of working? Because it's not the easy way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it's not that I, I, I really choose that path. It was something which happened to me, I think, because from um, uh, the early, from the beginning, when I was already at school, I really wanted to, to experiment with garments and clothes. And, and of course, there was also the inspiration, which was mainly uh, David Bowie, who was a big inspiration. And I really, from the beginning, I wanted to communicate through clothes. That was very important. And, uh, and that's why I think I took that part. So it, it happened, it evolved, it became um, over the years also stronger, I think. The, really, the, the, uh, on one side, the, the, the idea that I had to tell stories, and the other side, that I really wanted to do that in a very brave and, and very, yeah, with a strong identity. That was very important for me. But it happened. It was not a chosen part. It was something that happened. It's even a part of yourself, probably. You have also a lot of humor in your work. And was it something you wanted not to take yourself too seriously also? Oh, it's again something um, which was there from the beginning. I, I loved color. I loved uh, to express myself in a certain way. But then I was introduced and I, I found the work of uh, Paul McCarthy and, and Mike Kelly, very interesting. Uh, they're both uh, artists, uh, American artists. And, and, and I was so impressed by their work because they were able to, to tell stories uh, through very funny um, yeah, situations, but also very tough stories that I found so impressive. And, and I found it so much stronger than, than uh, than just doing something very yeah, tough and, and, and aggressive to, to go through a totally different path. And that's in fact what, how, I, yeah, I, how I started to work. I'm using colors, I'm using messages, um, a lot of humor, but on the other hand, there's also like a depth underneath, which is yeah, rather serious from time to time. Speaking of messages, one of the collection, the one that people can see uh, is the war, uh, Walter About Rights. Right now, it's the fall and winter 2020 and 21. And one thing that, there are two things that I like, but one that surprised me is the fact there's a lot of masks. And did you know something before us, before we didn't know about oh. the pandemia? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, even the spikes and, and the, the, the silhouette and also the, the way it is uh, so defending the, the, the wear, the body. Yeah, it, it's very like a symbol almost for this, this moment, this uh, corona moment. But I mean, I could not see in, in the future, but one way or another was feeling the, yeah, the necessity to use that kind of language. And, um, and I think it's, it's probably because uh, fashion designers are so much linked to, to the, um, uh, but it's happening in reality. And we also can react rather quickly. So when things are happening and when things are uh, there, yeah, we, yeah, we can, can tra translate it in our uh, language. And, and, yeah, and this happened by coincidence, but it happened. You have a fascination for masks. It seems you even did an exhibition about masks. Yeah. Do you think that that's what was always almost part of what you've done through the years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the beginning something which I really like. And it's also the whole the symbolic behind the, the, the idea of the mask is that you, you really can change your your appearance, you can change your persona. And that is so interesting, I think. And, and um, by wearing a mask, you can become yeah, a completely different uh, personage and that is yeah, very strong also. And, um, and that together with the, uh, yeah, the messages that you can bring over with uh, changing your uh, persona, uh, yeah, it was always fascinating to me. And it it's, it's helps also to, to underline something on a show, in a kind of shoot, in a, it, it, yeah, it creates a strong, strong vision. And that's also something which is interesting for a fashion designer. You are, you were part, and uh, of course, everybody's asking you things about that Antwerp 6, this famous group that uh, was very influential and very important and very inspiring for a whole generation of designers. And I was wondering uh, how important it was for you to group yourself to be a group like that was it 
something? Uh, we, um, I mean, we were, uh, first of all, we were in school, eh, studying together. And, uh, and then when we were uh, starting up, we, um, uh, yeah, we, we, we felt that we uh, had to do it differently because we were mainly in Belgium, working in Belgium, doing shows in Belgium. And we, from the beginning, we felt that we were not going over the border. So, in fact, Belgium was very small and it was a small country, also with uh, a very particular language, which is, which is Flemish. So even there, we were not able really to, to, uh, uh, to get further. And then um, through one of, uh, one of our friends who was familiar with uh, uh, the fair in, in, uh, in London, uh, he said to us, yeah, probably it would be a good idea to go together to that fair and present your work over there because that could be uh, like a breakthrough internationally because when we keep on working here from Belgium out we're never gonna gonna make it and uh, so it, it the group was was formed due to a practical thing so we, we took together some stands on that uh, fair we uh, uh, we had uh, together like a big van. We put all of our clothes inside. We traveled uh, to London. And then, yeah, we, we became a group without even wanting to be a group. <laughs> so it was a kind of synergy which worked very well. And, uh, and then it was mainly the, the, the press, the English press, who called us the Anthrop Six because they were not able to pronounce our names. They were also difficult. So it, it's, yeah, it was something that happened again by coincidence. And that are, of course, the strongest thing. So it was, again, not planned. It happened, but it was a strong yeah, statement. It did change a lot of things. This season, uh, it was a virtual season. You showed uh, during Paris Fashion Week. Was it a challenge for you? Did you, because you do great shows and now it's a different type of show. Did you enjoy doing it? Did you find it difficult? Oh, it was, it was uh, yeah, different. It was definitely different. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm showing almost 25 years in Paris and, and uh, I always enjoy to show because putting together a show and a show collection is um, it's, it's very, uh, tempting and then it needs a lot of energy but it's also very rewarding because that exact moment when the show is happening it's a kind of yeah, moment of magic and that's not that easy to to um, uh, yeah to to create that kind of magic in a different way so I knew I mean I, I know that I knew that and 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 uh, even despite the fact that we are all searching for something to replace that moment of magic it's very difficult so when I, I um, started to think about this digital presentation um, it, 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 it happened mainly by talking with uh, Dirk my friends talking about possibilities and what could be done. And then uh, he talked me about the uh, Théâtre de la Mode, the miniature um, thing what happened uh, in, uh, uh, right after the war. Uh, and I found it very, I, I did work in the past also already with miniature and it's very fascinating because even when you do it and you film it in, uh, in a certain way, you're not aware of the scale. And that I found also very interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and it was also the only way possible to make a collection. So I really worked on a collection, first in, in, uh, in Twal, so we made all the tryouts. Then we reduced it to 21%. And then uh, afterwards, I made uh, the real collection, the big one. And uh, it was a very, very different um, process and very interesting. Yes. But on the other end, I was missing also a little bit just that magic moment. That is, uh, despite mm. the fact that I got a lot of very nice reactions on the miniature on yes. the dogs. That's great. The we, hope, we hope for shows, that's for sure. You're also mm. a teacher and director of the fashion school at the Royal Academy of Edinburgh. Mm. And I was wondering, what do you tell your students uh, what's the, the advice you give them? I know you probably give them many, but if yeah. one, I mean, one message that you give them. Yeah, even more than ever now, it's such a um, challenging time. It's so different and, and, and it's going to be not easy the upcoming years for fashion. And uh, the, the last words when I, before they were finishing their school year, last previous school year in, in uh, June, I told them to use their creativity as a weapon. 
because that's the only thing you can do. You really have to to fight and, and be creative to to get results and also to to find solutions because that's now the thing what is happening in fashion you have to find uh, solution after solution to replace what happened before and you have to find uh, new ways to on one side to make the collection to present the collection but also to sell the collection and then also to to um, yeah, work with the clients, work with the press. So it's all things that you have to solve with creativity. Walter, thank you so much for all the things you've done through the years. You're really, and I'm very sincere and inspiration, and we need people like you right now, even more than ever. Thank you very much.